please welcome writer, producer, director, Alec Kashijian. <laughs> Seat there. And without further ado, here she is, Selena Gomez. Thank you. All right, it's been a long journey on this film uh, from the beginning where you started it with the revival tour and then everything else that happened to this moment in the most famous movie theater in the world. You know, to have this now playing and share it with the world. How, what does it feel like at this point? Um, my Spanx hurt really bad, <laughs> so I'm kind of uncomfortable, but I also feel a little nervous. I, I didn't watch it with you guys because I, I think it would be too hard for me to, but um, I'm honored. This is, I never would have expected this. Well, I, I was watching it here and uh, it was a rapt audience just throughout this movie. And Alec, I have to ask you, he did uh, Madonna's Truth or Dare, which is an extraordinary documentary. Something in common with this, and it's, it's pure honesty and rawness. A lot of times when you see these music documentaries and things, it's not all there on the screen as raw as this is. And I'm just wondering, what inspired you to, to do this with Alec? You know, how did this happen? I watched Truth or Dare, well, prior I had met Alec through my manager, Eileen. Um, he also directed a music video of mine. And we decided to maybe attempt to do a tour documentary. And we soon realized that there was much more going on than just the tour that I eventually ended up canceling. And he kind of came into these moments in my life that were beautiful, complicated, tragic. And I felt comfortable with with just sharing what I was walking through with Alec. I, I love him. Uh, yeah. Alec, talk about your process on taking this on. I think after you did Truth or Dare, you said, never again, I'm not going to go back to doing that again. Uh, I did. I said, <laughs> I will never do another music doc. And I'm really happy I stuck to my word. <laughs> because I don't think this is one. No. And um, of course, in 2016, when Selena asked me, I kind of melted because she is so authentic and vulnerable. And unlike most pop stars, most celebrities, in fact, that I know, she doesn't have armor. She doesn't have artifice. She doesn't put on a persona. And that amazed me. So like Selena said, we thought we'd give it a few weeks, and we both agreed the timing wasn't right. But I fell in love with her, and we continued becoming closer. So in 2019, it felt right. You know, Selena, there is even a line in the movie where they call you the queen of social media and all of this. You, you've had your life out there. This is a, a few different layers, I would say, to that. This is so honest, and you're putting yourself out there. I'm just wondering why you wanted to submit yourself to this, to share this with the world, because there's a lot of things that are very personal here. Yeah, I mean, I think someone actually asked me, do I feel like I did too much? And I'm not going to lie and say maybe there were a few moments that were scary to offer up. But at the same time, if anything you take away from this, I hope that people understand my purpose here is, is supposed to be connection. 
It's supposed to be helping other people, whether it's something minuscule like my, you know, shoe line or something. I don't own one, but I'm just saying if I did, it would always go back to the one thing that I care about, which is helping people. So I kind of used myself as a sacrifice in order for people to have the hard conversations. But I'm also going to crawl in a hole now for a few months so nobody sees me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I did too much. <laughs> um, the very first thing you see when the film starts is a warning that it's dealing with uh, mental uh, health issues. And if you feel you have that problem, there is a place to go, and that is the first thing you see here. How important is that you say you're, you're here to help people? This movie absolutely can. They make them feel like they're not alone. Well, I hope that it starts with a conversation that as soon as, you know, people, maybe family, if you watch it, that you will immediately start asking questions about, you know, things that you felt. People, you know, during the pandemic, it was such a time of isolation, and people were experiencing depression for the first time, anxiety, and I feel like this was a ri the right moment to release something like this, because a lot of people would ask that question, well, what do I do? How do I get help? What, you know, what do I do? How do I do it? And I just try my hardest to, you know, show them that you don't have to stop. You can keep going. Um, Alec, were there any boundaries put up here um, for you as a filmmaker, you know, have an agreement with Selena, you know, that I'm not going to go to this place or that place, or were the cameras allowed to be there 24-7? Uh, there were no boundaries like that. Uh, I had told her what my experience was making my first documentary, where there were no boundaries like that. And that's why I tried to dissuade her when she first came to me. Um, but there didn't need to be, I think I had such a deep respect for her. You know, I wasn't trying to do something exploitative. I wasn't trying to push her to some place she wasn't comfortable with. And our relationship and our comfort level and her comfort level grew as we kept shooting. And that's all I could hope for. Yeah. I loved the sequence. Well, first of all, I love the sequences in Kenya. That was, that's a wonderful kind of foundation and everything that you have when you go there. But everybody in those sequences, it was just life affirming to actually watch it. And I love the stuff in Grand Prairie. You know, where you, you seemed so happy to go home and back. I mean, I'm a Texas girl through and through, and I, I am <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> um, and I truly, I, I do feel the most beautiful when I am home. And when I go home every time I visit the house that I'm from, and I like to visit the neighbors, it just, I don't know. I don't think that they see me any different than who I was when I was younger. Yeah. Um, this is going to premiere on Apple, which means it goes global instantly. A lot of movies, they'll start really slow. Here, the whole world's going to see it here. What do you want them to take away from this? I'm going to ask you both, but Alec, you tell me what, what you hope for this film. Well, gosh, without sounding too earnest, but I can't help it, um, I think we're living in a time where there, are, a lot of people are feeling darkness and isolation, and nothing would make me happier than if someone watches this and feels hope, and also realizes the power that Selena realizes, which is based on human connection. One connection at a time can make such a difference and remind us of our humanity. Um, it's a hard question. I, I hope people take away that it's okay to feel not good enough and to feel 
that you're complicated and you're complex and you feel these things. It's just about having a healthier relationship with how you talk to yourself, how you seek help, how you talk to other people. I, I hope that it just starts a chain reaction of people saying, hey, well, I, I want to say something about my mental health. I want to talk about it. I want to seek help. And that's one of the bravest things someone can do. And if one person is just you know impacted by this film, I would consider myself the luckiest girl if I could help just one person. And, and it's so fun, too. There's a lot of fun things in this, but it's almost like, is it almost like watching your life pass before you? So much of it has been in front of the camera. I realized watching this, starting at age seven with your first job with, I mean, how many kids out there would have loved to have co-starred with Barney? I mean, my God, you know? <laughs> Actually, I got made fun of a lot for that. <laughs> Don't go to like fourth grade and say you were on Barney. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are wearing purple tonight. I know, I just realized that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But what is that like, you know, when you watch all of the uh, great um, footage, you know, uh, right as a very, very young child, home movies and things like that, that, that you just put out there for the world to see here and allowed them to see it? Yeah. yeah, that was my Nana, who would love to be here. But she's the one that always had the camera in my face. And I don't know, that's all her doing. <laughs> Let me ask you, we just heard the song. It's written for the film, My Mind and Me. Um, and yeah, it's a great song. <laughs> I'm wondering about the collaboration there. There were a few songwriters that worked on it with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was interesting because it was the first time that I actually allowed anyone to have, you know, my journals. I mean, from you. You're the only one. So I had multiple, and from that stemmed a conversation with, well, you know, maybe we try and do, you know, a, what's the song for the movie? How do we do that? And luckily, I work with these amazing producers. Their producing name is The Monsters, and they're just really wonderful people who know me and have known me. And we were able to create My Mind in Me, and I feel like it was a perfect example of what I walked through, and it was beautiful, and then we ended up naming the film that. Yeah, it's a great, it's obviously the film, is that, the film title was always going to be that? Or? The second I heard that song, I just said, this is the title of the movie, and I loved it so much that I made every music cue in the film, a variation of it. Oh. So. That's interesting, too, the way you've weaved it in here. What was the production schedule here? How long did it take you to put all this together once you had it? Uh, uh, too long. Um, <laughs> I mean, we had COVID during our last year of shoot shooting and then editing, which made it very difficult. That and the fact that we're living in a time of docu-series, so all the streamers have editors on schedule. So I would get an editor for three, four months, then they'd need to go to a docu-series. Um, so it took a long time, but I got to work with some great people. You mentioned all these docu-series and everything, and we see them and we follow people forever, weeks, years, seasons. This is a tight 96 minutes, and you got this life in there, and you got what you wanted to say in there. What didn't you get in that you really wanted to? Nothing. Ah. Because <laughs> I didn't have a specific time. I just knew that I would rather do the work of condensing it to try to make this as powerful as possible with as with as little fat as possible. And what we put out is exactly what I think was the minimum and maximum dose. Yeah. So what advice, Selena, uh, on the other end, would you give to those here in the audience tonight and those watching the film 
that are planning on being global superstars. <laughs> oh no, don't try that. <laughs> um, no, Looks like a rough I, I don't know who I am to give advice. To be honest, I actually just want to thank every single one of you guys that came out because I truly thank you. I'm not saying I have the answers at all. I'm not saying I even have a powerful speech I could say. I would just say that you guys have given me a responsibility and I carry that so deeply and I try my hardest to do as best as I can, but that's all I would ever want anyone to know is that they're exactly enough the way they are, that they are worthy, they are seen, they deserve love, they are loved, that people were, will root for them. That's what I want people to feel, everyone in this room, to feel something like that. That's, and I, th I think they do. And, um, and before we go, I, I, I want to thank the AFI Fest, first of all, for making this their world premiere. This yeah, is a very so cool much. thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for yeah, the AFI. Thank you. This is a very cool thing. There's some nobodies coming later in the week, like Steven Spielberg and Alejandro Iñárritu, so. <laughs> no big deal. It's, it's very cool. I also want to commend you on Only Murders in the Building. It's a terrific show. I love you with Steve Thank Martin you. and Martin Short. The three of you are so incredible. I hope you go on and on with that and tell us all who it's going to be in season three. Uh, <laughs> but they're the best. That must be so much fun. I am so lucky. It is one of, the, it's actually changed my life. Working with those two are just, it's a constant, constant bickering and bits and stuff. Plus, you know, they're just like m my old grandpas that I love. <laughs> it's great. Well, again, this is uh, this begins on a Friday on Apple TV Plus, and tell everybody they got to check this out. Selena Gomez, my mind and me. Thank you, Alec. Thank, thank you, you, Selena, thank you so for coming out thank here, you. and thank you guys. Thank you.